The echoes of Russia's assault on Hungary ring round the world. In Saigon, capital of Vietnam, girl demonstrators march in protest against the Soviet crushing of Hungary's bid for independence. Vivid banners make their feelings plain. Vietnam remembers its own recent civil war, and the former French colony is still divided into communist and non-communist zones. So feelings can still run high, and events in Budapest do not seem remote to the people of tropical Saigon. For the third time in ten months, chaos instead of orderly government rules in South Vietnam. Students in the streets of Saigon are but one of the factions threatening to undermine the already precarious government of Premier Nguyen Khan. The students resented his seizing the presidency under a new constitution. Simultaneously, Buddhists take the anniversary of their bloody 1960 demonstrations to protest the predominance of Catholics in the government. Some express themselves in comparatively orderly marches like these. Elsewhere, mob fights lead to at least a dozen deaths and scores of injuries. Many of those arrested are communist Viet Cong agitators. With Premier Khan relinquishing the presidency, the government is temporarily headed by acting Premier Nguyen Wan, a Harvard-educated economist who had been Deputy Premier for Finances. Whether he and the military leaders can work out a lasting government and end the bitter factionism of South Vietnam is a question that concerns not only that beleaguered country, but the whole world. For without internal stability, little can save it from communism. Catholic South Vietnamese refugees march through the streets of Saigon, protesting the intervention of foreign peacemakers. The demonstrators insisted on the destruction of all communist elements by force before peace can be achieved. Effigies of Ho Chi Minh are burned, while in contrast, Pope Paul has pleaded several times for the start of peace talks. <laughs> 